Well, thank you. We are going to try this again. I know we went live for a few seconds before, but I think we got things underway. Ladies and gentlemen, and dads, grandparents, people, little kids, dogs, cats, whatever you are, welcome to Travel Man Dan Weekly Beer and Video Review Show. I'm excited. I'm Travel Man Dan, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, got some really good beers coming up. Going to talk about some really fun things. So let's not hesitate. Let's not stall it out. Let's get right into the show. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, with the holiday spirit coming around, we're going to go ahead and we're going to try out something uh, new, and we're going to try out something uh, interesting as I went and chose my favorite beers to review on this channel. And if you can ever suggest any beers that I should try out, make sure you go ahead and throw them down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out. If I can find them, that's great. If you can introduce me to a supplier or where I can buy them, that'd be even better better i'm in los angeles so i'll pretty much go anywhere if you suggest a beer and i'll try to bring it to you on the show but the beer that caught my eye today is well <laughs> it's called bad elf all right check it out man this is what caught my eye this little stinker right here okay he's got those pointy crazy ears that big old schnoz rosy red cheeks is probably sucking back a couple of drinks and um <clears throat> well it is around the holidays it is around christmas and i thought this would be a really cool fun beer to try out it's a considered a winter's al okay it is by a company all right i didn't even really do a, any much of a research on it it's out of uh, it's from a company out of england okay let's see if i can find uh their name it is called Ridgeway Brewing and this is their Winter's Al. Okay, now notice the bottle is uh, pretty cool. It's got this really long neck to it and um, well, a bit of a chody bottom, okay, if you will. And well, the Al is uh, supposed to be pretty good. It's 4.5%, so not the strongest Al. Um, because it is a holiday Winter's Al, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what it looks like by pouring it into a cup. Uh, one of the really cool things also I like about it, just a simple red and green bottle cap. All right, so let's go ahead and start the show off. You know, we got our red uh, little beer thing here. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and pop this sucker open. Ooh. All right. Right away, I smell a red amber kind of. Uh, well, it's definitely a strong uh, ale taste uh, smell to it, but uh, right away you can smell the amber in it. So let's see how this beer matches up with the pour. All right, we'll go ahead and pour this sucker in. There we go. All right, right away as I'm looking at it, it's uh, it's got a mm, well, a pretty neutral gold. And there we go. As I'm looking at it in the light, okay, you can kind of see the amberness of it. Um, owls are typically red and being from England I know they like their brown and red owls over there so let's go ahead and let's try out this uh, bad elf beer from Ridgeway <laughs> let's try this bad elf uh, beer from Ridgeway Brewing here we go wow okay all right eh eh first sip Initial taste, uh, it's got a bit of a sour, kind of uh, piney aftertaste, much like one of your IPAs. Um, definitely smooth, okay? One of the things I did notice about it is that it's so smooth, it almost tastes flat. So that's interesting. I always like that kind of um, carbonation and, and, and bubblingness of a good uh, beer. But all in all, not a great sip, but definitely not a terrible sip. All right, okay, now there's a little bit left. I believe this is, uh, well, it's um, a little bit bigger than a 12-ounce bottle, so uh, let's go ahead and dump the rest of it in there, and then we'll go ahead and I'll give you a little bit more of my opinion on this beer. And now let's go ahead, in case you haven't noticed, um, maybe you've already went out and bought some or, I don't know, uh, found some somewhere. I don't know. Uh, there is some pieces out there floating. There's some pieces floating out there. I promise you I'm not too drunk. But um, 
Travel Man Dan merch, baby. It is out. It is up. I'll go ahead and put the link down in this description, but it's on all the videos and every description. Um, just go, if you're curious about how to purchase it, if you want to get some Travel Man Dan shirts and hoodies, you just go to any description in the video, um, and then there's a link there that will take you to the store. You can go ahead and check those out. That would be really um, supportive, but make sure you do one thing, and I ask everybody to please make sure that you notify me whether you tag me, you shoot me a DM, just uh, let me know that you went ahead and you supported me by purchasing a shirt, hoodie, mug, or socks so that I can give and share the love back to you because it really means a lot to me. And thank you for everyone that's already purchased something out there. You're making it happen for me. There's no other way to say it. I mean, yeah, you got to do the work and I got to get out there and I got to grind away and stuff like that. But <clears throat> the community that supports me, uh, whether or not they buy merchandise, they, they watch my videos, they share my videos, that's a huge help. Um, whatever it is that you do, I really appreciate it and I want to say thank you. So let it be known that if you purchase something, let me know so I can personally thank you. And well, if you're in Los Angeles, I'll even personally give you a hug. <laughs> so uh, yeah, without further ado, since we already talked a little bit about uh, the Travel Man Dan merch, let's get into this week's topics. And I want to bring up, and then we'll get into last week's videos. And that's the Bills game today. That's right. The Buffalo Bills are playing on prime time against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, well, if you're a diehard Bills fan like myself, you're um, in the Bills. I, I don't know if I'm in the Bills Mafia, but I definitely support it. Um, but i a huge fan ever since the 70s. Really big on the Buffalo Bills. So, please... Watch the game tonight. It's the national game. It was supposed to be the 1 o'clock Eastern game against Pittsburgh, but because the two teams have playoff implications, it was flexed and bumped up to the Sunday night game about three weeks ago. And boy, oh boy, are we pumped because I'm going to go over to my boy Max's house. What up, Max? Shoot, dude. I don't know what that means, but uh, I think I usually see the kids doing that kind of stuff when they're uh, throwing shout-outs. Um, or, or I think they do... Uh, skirt skirt <laughs> but anyway going over to my boy max's house getting ready for the game tonight it's gonna be a lot of fun excited excited to watch the bills take on the steelers on national tv it's been a while since we've been on a sunday night game i'm not even sure if we've ever had a sunday night game i can't remember the last sunday night game i know we've had monday night games but boy oh boy this one's a big one because if we win we're in that's right we win we're in the Bills playoffs chances at this point are pretty good. They only have to win one game. But the next three games are Pittsburgh, New England, and the Jets. So if we win all three of them, boy, oh boy, and we don't know what happened to New England. We could win the division. That would be crazy, right? Oh, man. But let's take one game at a time. Let's start off with tonight's game, Pittsburgh Steelers. Kickoff is at 520 uh, Pacific Standard Time, obviously 820 Eastern Standard Time, wherever you're watching it from. Make sure that, uh, well, hopefully that you're rooting for the Bills. And maybe you're rooting for the Bills with some Travel Man Dan merch on. <laughs> All right, let's get into this bad, angry, what is it, angry bad elf? What is it? Bad elf. Okay, he looks like a bad elf, doesn't he? Like a little, my, I, I, I don't know, he's like perverted, kind of sneaky little guy. Right? Look at him, he's got long, crazy fingers. But anyway, bad elf from England. Here we go, the winter's beer. All right, well, it's got kind of a sour taste to it. Like I said, it's really flat. I don't know if that has something to do with being a British beer. Um, if you know and if you're an expert on beer, let me know down in the comments below. One thing you got to know about the, this beer review show. This beer review show is more about uh, me getting in front of you guys, talking about beers, or talking about my videos, going live, and just having a chance to interact with you. I'm not a beer connoisseur, although I do drink every week. I do have fun when I drink beer. Um, it's exciting. It's uh, delicious. And, um, well, I love a good beer. But I'm not an expert, per se. I just drink a lot, and I have had a lot of different kinds. Um, so, you know, there's, like, connoisseurs that are very technical about what exactly goes into it, how it's brewed, the aging process. I'm not that guy, okay? So let that be known. I'm just a blue-collar guy from Kenmore, New York, that's out here sucking back beers, talking about my travel channel. But um, if you know that English beers are, are typically flat like this, let me know. I'd love to hear um, 
some perspective on that. I'd love to hear opinion, and, and definitely if you are uh, if you're a connoisseur, let me know. But you know, it's okay. You know, it's it's not the greatest beer. Um, you can see there's not a lot of bubbles in it. When I shake it up a little bit, I can swig it around. Okay. It's got kind of a weird aftertaste to it. I'm really not liking that. It's a really sour, kind of mashy. Um, well, it's kind of like an old owl. You know, you know what a fallen, um, fallen beer is where it's sitting on the table and, and somebody has left it there and you're at the end of the night and you ran out and you're just picking up beers off the table, just random beers. I mean, I haven't done that in a long time, but you know, those, um, those things are really sour at the end of the night or the next morning. And that's kind of what this one tastes like, but, um, but definitely you can feel it's stronger than 4.5%. Anyway, let's get into the videos today. Thanks a lot for joining me though. And uh, last week I want to talk about the video that came out on Wednesday. Oh man, that was freaking awesome. If you had a chance to check that out, I was in Vilnius, Lithuania. Just outside of Old Town Vilnius is this certain certain section they call Uzipis. And Uzipis is actually its own republic. Um, Oddly and strangely as it sounds, they have their own constitution, their own money. Um, it's a collective, like, I don't know what it is, just section of the city. I don't know how to explain it. Um, a section of the city that calls itself the Republic of Uzipis. And it's artists, it's poets, it's um, um, actors, it's musicians, it's all kinds of people that are into creative arts. And they basically formed this little uh, section of the city to be theirs. So really cool, really quaint. I walk up and down the uh, streets of it. It's not a big place, so I get around pretty quickly. But if you want to check it out, I go ahead and I show you the Constitution. And the really cool thing, I'm sorry, 44 sentences or rules of, uh, and they're really wacky and wacky of stuff. Like a dog has the right to be a dog. That's one that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and the really cool thing about it, is as you walk down the main strip in Uzipis, and you'll see it in the video that came out last Wednesday, you can see it in like, I want to say it's got to be about 30 or 40 different languages. Really cool, really fun, interesting thing. You'll see people are really, uh, <laughs> they're really taking it in. They have their own currency, which only comes out on their, um, their national day, which is April 1st. I mean, that's kind of ironic. It's kind of like a pun um, on April Fool's Day. But that's really neat. If you haven't seen that video, that is last week's Wednesday weekly video. And I definitely suggest you check it out. It's from the Republic of Uzipis, which is in a section of Vilnius, Lithuania. And you are going to love it. Let me know if you've seen it down below. Let me know if you've been there down below. All that good stuff. And, um, well, let's get into the bad elf a little bit. I'm going fast because it's in a glass, as you can see. But, um, yeah, I don't know how I feel too much about this one. All right, all gone. Got through it quick. I want to go ahead and give you my thoughts on it. Bottle-wise, great. Love it. Amazing title. That's what got me. Um, the picture... Uh, it's just this crazy old man elf kind of thing. Um, the taste is not awful. It's not like that 26 beer that I had that one time. That was just not good at all. I didn't enjoy that. It's not an awful taste. It's just not really good. It's not, it's, it's not what I really like. Um, I don't know, something to do with the Al or the Amber beer. Um, years ago, there was this beer that came out called Red Wolf, uh, um, and then its counterpart, I think, was Red Dog, and it was like Miller and, um, I want to say Miller and maybe Budweiser, but neither of those red beers I liked, and still to this day, I've never really liked amber beers. I tried the Budweiser one, um, not really my fancy, um, and overall, not a terrible beer, but not one of my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a lower score. And because of the label, I'm going to bring it up a little bit. But I'm going to give it a 6.5. That's right. Bad Elf gets a 6.5. So, um, yeah, we're putting that sucker down. Um, and now, let's get into the next beer. Ooh, baby. Which... <laughs> 
I may have to walk over to my friend's house today because the next beer, super strong, super potent, um, packs a punch, and is one of my favorites uh, micro breweries, or I guess now they're called craft breweries. This weird shift on names um, but here it is ladies and gentlemen let me present to you with another crazy label we have the arrogant bastard Al oh look at this and it is like a crazy looking devil with horns and wings and he's got a big old beard he's got some muscular arms and some forearms and some fingers and talons and just really cool now the arrogant bastard Al is a strong Al like I said it ranks in there at 7.2, okay? So definitely, you know, above the, the, the threshold of strong beers. Um, it is made by one of my favorite brewing companies. And let me find out this. Uh, <laughs> it tells you it's an aggressive beer. I love that. Um, it is really good and it is delicious. But I'm not seeing where their label is, so I can go ahead and show you guys. But... Don't worry, I'll go ahead and always put everything down in the description below. If you ever see any one of my videos on the weekly beer and video review show, just go down in the link below and click on their website and they can go ahead and tell you where exactly they were able to get it. Um, so, it's not really showing... Um, Alright, so it's made in Escanito, California and it is by... It's canned by Arrogant Consonorda. Okay, so... Pretty interesting. I was hoping I could show you guys a little bit more about their company, but I'll go ahead and make sure to throw it down in the description below. This beer now for a few years. I discovered it obviously because of the, the look of the can and stuff. And I'm telling you, you want to get drunk, all you need is two of these, okay? All right, let's go ahead and I'll show you the difference. Look at the thickness in this owl as I'm dumping it into this uh, pint glass comparatively to the last one now the last one was well it wasn't exactly this thick look at that that's almost like a stout okay really strong you can't even see my face on the other side of this uh pint glass but as i pull down you can see it's definitely got some good head on it carbonation okay in the light you can see it has a tint of amber but mostly it's a black beer and it's a black owl. And let's go ahead and try out this arrogant bastard. Ah. Wow. It's been a long time since I had this. First sip, I taste malty, like an oatmeal-y, kind of uh, tasty, rustic kind of flavor. It's delicious, and, and, and the, when you hit the, the little foamy part of the head, it brings that flavor back down. And as the liquids are going down your throat, you can then taste that other little, and lick the lips, and then you get that sweetness, the sweetness of the owl that's all over this baby. And well, I did drink that other one fast. I'm gonna have to keep this one at a modest pace because we got a little bit to go, and I don't want to get too wasted. I'll start slurring my words. That's the awesome for, you know. <laughs> All right, enough for the shenanigans. Now let's get into the video that I put out last Friday. If you haven't seen the Food Friday videos that come out every Friday, this next video, well, this last video is going to be freaking awesome if you haven't seen it because, well, it's traditional Lithuanian cabbage rolls. They're called balandinis, okay? And I know nobody ever thinks, like, what cuisine do you like? It's really good and exotic and everyone's thinking Asian and like spices and you know all this kind of stuff and oh, oh no this was in the, the Brazilian rainforest. Now, no, it's in Eastern Europe and it's in Lithuania and it's just cabbage, rice and meat and the way that they prepare it, the way that they stew the cabbage is phenomenal, okay? It was awesome. I went to this place called Schnookies. Schnookies? Schnikies? No, not Schnikies. Schnookies. And um... It was like a little cafe inside Uzipis, and I just happened to be walking around filming that episode, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to stop along. Stopped in this place, and lo and behold, they had a full scale Lithuanian menu, and it was awesome. Cabbage rolls have been like made in my home since I was you know, a child. My father makes them, but we never knew kind of where they came from. I still don't. It's probably that region, um, maybe parts of Russia, this kind of thing. But what it is, is just 
ground beef and uh and a little bit of pork made into like a longer meatball and then wrapped in stewed cabbage and it is freaking delicious and you need to check out that video if you've never seen it also the little bar that i was at the little restaurant thing really fun place the owner was uh schnickus means uh the man who talks too much and as you know i have the gift of gab but apparently the bar owner also has the gift of gab so that's kind of cool and then you also see me eat traditional beetroot uh soup which is really tasty it's a really flavorful kind of creamy it's got um uh, like little beets uh, string beets and onions in it and it's got this uh like pink base and dill splashed all over it really exciting really fun food video and definitely something that I would suggest that you watch and then maybe try to locate in your city or maybe you go all the way to Lithuania and check it out for yourself that video is really fun if you do see it let me know what you think shoot me a comment put something down below give me a thumbs up all that kind of good stuff that YouTube good stuff I like the YouTube talk go ahead and give me a like put the description down below all that kind of stuff I don't know um all right going off on a little tangent is I suck back on these owls. I'm just getting amped up thinking about the Bills game. But we already talked about that. The next thing I want to talk to is, um, well, guys, I won this weekend. <laughs> it was uh, pretty interesting, pretty fun stuff. I was at a Christmas party, a work Christmas party. I was having a blast. I love the people I work with. They're phenomenal. They're good, salt-of-the-earth people. Um, Hardworking and just really enjoyed every minute of it. But... Lo and behold, there was a limbo contest. Do 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 do. All right, how low can you go? How low can you go? Do 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 do. How low can you go? Travel man Dan was so low that I freaking won the contest, man. Couldn't believe it. I haven't done limbo in a long, long time. I didn't really properly stretch out, and um, well, it was a good, good effort, and I gave it my best, and I actually won. So. Woohoo, Travel Man Dan won some bucks on Amazon. That's right. So uh, everybody loves Amazon bucks. And um, had a good time at that party as well. And I came home a little bit of a winner. So it's really fun. I want to share that with you. Uh, if you like Limbo, let me know. Maybe one day we'll go ahead and challenge each other. <laughs> um, but that was fun. Um, all right, let's get back into this arrogant bastard. Really, really good stuff. Ah, wow. Okay, so definitely a strong owl. If you don't like a punch in the face from beer, if you don't like a sop, a little karate chop to the throat, if you don't like like a little uh, kick in your beer, this isn't the one for you because every little sip has got something in it, okay? Whether it's a clapper on the side of your ear, whether it's a punch in the nose, okay? It's something that's going to make you jerk back a little bit from the glass, okay? Because, well, although it is tasty and I do like the strength of it, it's not your average owl. It is definitely your stronger type owl. So be careful with that. I'm warning you now. But I taste like now a bit of maltiness, a bit of... A mapleness mixed in there with that sweet kind of grape flavor. Um, I'm not sure what exactly it is. I've had it on the Guinness beers. I've had it in the Boddingtons, but definitely hanging around that Al, um, that flavor. Okay, let's go into the next thing that I want to talk about. So, I live in Los Angeles, California, right? I don't know if you do. Let me know where you live, and I'd love to hear from you. And I'll probably strike up a conversation, but. Um, I have never been to the theme parks here other than Magic Mountain, okay? And this past, well, yesterday, I was lucky enough to go with some friends of mine. Um, so, shouts out to Becky, who works at Universal, and I went to Universal Studios. That's right, she brought me to Universal Studios with uh, Colton. These are members of my... Uh, improv comedy troupe and we had a wonderful time out there and it was just uh <laughs> i don't even know how to say it if, if, if i've ever been to universal it is so many freaking people man it is like it's you can't run five feet because you'll collide with somebody and that part was a little bit of getting used to i took it took me a little bit you know i lived in china 
I know the I know the deal with people. It's just there was a lot of people, and I wasn't expecting that. And everyone's kind of like this. Dude, I gotta go here. I gotta get this. Let's go enjoy this ride. And you're like, you're just like, whoa, dude. You know. But as far as the park itself, wow, what a place, man. What a great place. I mean, did the Harry Potter world? If you've never been to the Harry Potter world, that was freaking amazing. And I could just tell you right now, be ready. For for Christmas, okay? Because on Christmas, I'm going to be posting the Harry Potter light show at their kind of like um, castle right there. Uh, I was privy to it. Um, I was brought in there and I was able to film some of it. So if you're into the Harry Potter and you've always wanted to go to Universal and you want to see the light show that happens at night, um, don't worry. You can see it on Travel Man Dan on Christmas Day. So I'm kind of, you know, letting it out the bag. There it is. Boom. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. Um, but yeah, you got the Harry Potter Transformers one is really cool. It's like it puts you in this chair and it flies you all around and on the side of you is the screen. I was so impressed at the screens and the sound and the way that like you're sitting stationary in a chair and the chair is moving at some point, but the way they make you feel like you're actually on a roller coaster is freaking insane. I mean, the Simpsons one, holy the first like initial crawl upward and then you're like the screen is just going you're like looking all over Springfield it's amazing man it's really really amazing um, I really enjoyed that one the mummy the mummy was awesome and just an overall great experience so well done Universal I gotta say my favorite ride or you know experience at there was um was the studio tour I mean as an actor myself and as an actor who's actually worked on those sets. I did um, Bruce Almighty there. And, and I had a few auditions in their studios, uh, like in the um, office areas. And I've been on a few of the sound stages. I don't remember exactly what number, but, you know, it was kind of cool to take that cart through the studios and, like, and, and see it. And I, oh, wow, I've actually worked on that one. Or, you know, this is a really good experience. Um, I was really happy to be uh, invited there by my friends. And if you get a chance, make sure you check out Universal either in Studio City, California or down in Orlando. What I will tell you is it's crazy expensive. I mean, it's like, it, it's really expensive. I mean, parking, the, the cheap parking, what I paid for was $27. All right, they must get like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a day. And then a ticket, I think, is like one twenty. But then there's so many people that all you're doing is stand in line. So you're like standing in line for an hour, standing in line for an hour, and then you're um, you're brought in there. And before you know it, it's like I spent all day in line. But then pizza's like ten dollars a slice. What the hell? It's not even good pizza either. And um, you know that's uh, that's my only complaints about the place. And then if you want to go ahead and pay for the express line pass, it's another like hundred something bucks. So you know I feel sorry for anyone as much as i want a family and children of my own whew, that's tough so thank you so much for becky i was lucky because she was an employee there we were able to get in through that fast pass and be able to go through uh pretty quickly and i was able to ride all the rides and not be uh bothered with all that stuff and you know i'm not a cheapskate but it, you know like i said if you're a family of four you're looking at twelve hundred dollars to just go and have a good time there you know that's like it's insane so Great park, awesome place, a lot of people, very expensive. All right, that, there's a quick review. Let's go back to this arrogant bastard Al. All right, so even just about this much, in, even about this much into it, you can start to feel. I can feel in the back of my cheeks here, um, starting to get a little buzzy, starting to get a little floaty feeling. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and try this out. Whoa. Strong, definitely strong. All right, I don't remember it being this strong, but um, maybe the other Al still sitting in my stomach combined with this one, it's making it a little bit more, um, well, strong. <laughs> so let's go on to the next thing, and that's what I want to talk about, and that was the videos that are coming out next week. And the videos that are coming out next week are going to be so much fun. Get ready because I continue my love of searching for castles around the world as I go to a, a really cool medieval island castle called Trakai and it is in Lithuania. It's um it's outside of Vilnius a little bit, but um 
it's just one of those really cool, you know, when you click on your internet to open it, or, you know, I'm sorry, when you click on your, your, uh, your computer to open it, and then you, you click on the Bing or whatever it is, and it shows you these really cool, like, pictures, it's one of those places. It's like a little island in the middle of nowhere, like little island, and then on there is a castle. And it's a really fun uh, exploration. I take you up and down throughout the corners. It's going to be a two-part video. So the first one will come out. And then the next one will come out right before the new year. And it's just really exciting. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know I love castles. So if you're into castles, if you're into like medieval stuff, um, really kind of neat to look at because it's the real deal when you go to like lithuania and latvia and estonia this is no like game of thrones set this is like the real deal stuff man so uh Trakai castle it was really fun really exciting and uh, stay tuned that's coming out this upcoming wednesday now the food friday video that's coming up is also going to be a lot of fun because I'm going in and I'm going to ch check out the chicken sandwich at Popeye's, okay? <laughs> and I've been long overdue for this, baby, you know, but the review is in. And um, I kind of wait for it. I know it's kind of probably not the best, uh, how you say, social media or, you know, uh, strategy. You know, you want to hit it when it's hot and you go, uh, uh, you know how I got this car? Uh, uh, you know, uh, then you go in there and they talk about all the I'm just not that guy, you know what I mean? I do it when I want to do it um and uh now is about the time it's time for me to do the Popeye's chicken sandwich if you haven't seen the chicken sandwich that I did at Chick-fil-a you can go ahead and check that out I compare the two but um this will be the second one I'm sorry I compared that one now I'm going to compare it with this one and let's see what all the buzz is about don't know too much about it Popeye's was always like I don't know it was like the fast food that nobody really ever hates you know they always ate kfc so um let's check it out i want to go check that out myself so stay tuned for next friday's video it will be the popeye's chicken sandwich <sighs> oh, damn. okay so we're, we're looking forward to that let's get back into this al then i want to talk about some other things and we'll close the show out with a quote Uh, wow holy crap okay anybody that can drink like four or five of these my gosh hats off to you because this is strong all right I, I'm, I'm already starting to slur a little bit so if you're younger and you're uh, uh under 21 and you're not in your you're in the united states i'm sorry about that um I'm not drunk in all my videos. I'm just starting to feel a little buzz in this one because we went with the heavy stuff. It's the holidays, baby. Um, all right, so the next thing I want to talk about is, well, what are you doing on the 20th of December? Huh? Star Wars, baby. That's right. Star Wars is coming out. So let me know if you're going to go see that. I want to hear what you think of it. I'm super excited about it. Um, last year, there wasn't one. Um, I like how they keep coming out. I know the Mandalorian Army or Mandalorian uh, has really kicked out and especially with the baby Yoda and really got people excited about Star Wars again right at the peak time because they're like pew, you know, peeking and they want to see some more and bam, bam now here comes the new Star Wars really looking forward to that huge Star Wars collector of toys merchandise um, always been ever since I was a kid and I saw Return of the Jedi and you know Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, all that good stuff, but this one, this one especially I'm really excited about because I can't tell you anymore, but I will tell you, one of my good friends, somebody that I've worked with in movies, somebody that I've hung out with, somebody I've gone out with and had coffee with just on, you know, a friend basis, like a good friend of mine, he's actually in the movie, I'm really proud of him, I can't say much more, but I'm really excited to see it, and um, I'll really be rooting for for him and all the stuff that he did because uh he was a huge integral part to this movie and you know just being just being on star wars just making it is um it's a dream it's a dream of mine okay <laughs> it's like it is really 
So George Lucas, anybody over at Disney, if you guys ever hear this, call me. I, I Please, I'll be a freaking stormtrooper. I just want to be in Star Wars. Um, I do have some acting chops. Uh, so, you know, a role, Dengar, anybody? Anybody want to see Travel Man Dan as Dengar? If you don't know, research it. Check out all the books, the comic books, the toys, the Empire Strikes Back. I would make a perfect Dengar. But... This new movie coming out, I'm really excited because my buddy's in it and I'm going to be rooting for him. And uh, that's all I can tell you. Hope you get a chance to see it. I'll tell you next week who he is and what he did. All right. The next thing I want to talk about real quick is um, what am I doing Friday? I won't be able to see the movie on the 20th, unfortunately, because... I will be traveling and you know sometimes when I use the magic globe I get really worn out and something to do with the time travel and the but switching through portals and stuff like that I just won't have the time so um, I am gonna be going back to Buffalo New York baby there it is the 716 all right so really looking forward to spending the holidays with my family uh, getting in there and see my parents again my brothers and my sisters um, so next week I'll be uh, flying out to buffalo through the magic globe and really looking forward to uh just getting back home to my roots and i'll do my best to get some videos out of my town of kenmore uh, my village of kenmore my um my little fun little place that i grew up i want to try to get the trifecta of sheridan drive um i, I just want to just go out there and show the world more of kenmore tonawanda all this kind of good stuff and uh, really looking forward to it so I hope that you guys are enjoying these holidays I hope that you're having fun and taking it all in and that you're able to spend time with your loved one the next thing is guys I just want to point out something if you're with me and and you're commenting and I'm not seeing anything down below is I had some technical difficulties I'm not sure what it is so if you guys are shouting out to me or saying some I'm not answering you back I'm not calling you out because I just don't see it I, I see nothing all I see is uh, uh, you know the bar behind me and everything that I'm speaking into so if you guys are shooting comments out to me Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for joining me. Um, I see three people are still with me. Thank you so much. That's awesome um, it, it, People always ask me well, how many people how many subscribe? I don't know I got some you know people they, you know and I got three today And this is freaking awesome because you guys are with me you're engaging with me and um, I really appreciate that So let that be known we're almost done with this beer. All right. It's pretty strong. Okay. Next thing I'm about is the UFC. Anybody see the UFC? First of all, hats off to Max Holloway for such a, a dominant uh, reign at champion. And he's such a good champion. And like he said, he's only 28. But a uh, great fight. Him and Volonovsky, uh, the Australian guy, really good fight. Um, Amanda Nunes solidifying herself as the GOAT. Um, just, uh, I mean, the, that woman is one tough woman. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And then lastly, the main event, you know, these people, these, these guys, they really did not like each other more anticipated on Kobe Covington and what he had created and stuff. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about any of that stuff because I don't know these guys personally, but what they did give us is one hell of a fight. Kobe Covington fought with a broken jaw for two rounds, maybe three. Um, you know, it's hard to live up to being the persona of something. And I don't know how he's going to come out of this. I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, mm, he got stopped at the last bit. You know, I think that he just, the referee just stopped Kobe Covington and receiving more damage. Within 12 more seconds, I think Lewis Mann would have really, really, could, you know, who knows what could have happened. If he would have hit him, you know, uh, really clean with that jaw being the way, the way it was, um, who knows. Uh, but I hope that he gets back healthy. I never wish anybody to be unsafe and, and to be hurt like that. But one hell of a fight. Anybody that fought in the UFC, uh, this, this sip is for you guys because uh, you guys are real gladiators and appreciate that. All right. Oh, you know what? This is a tall boy. Guys, we got a little bit longer than I expected. I forgot. This isn't just a camp. This is a tall boy. So, all right, we got a little bit more. Here we go. We're back in a half a, half a little pint. All right. So every once in a while, these weekly beer and video review shows, they go off the rails. Mainly because the host is drinking stronger beer. 
So I hope you're able to follow me. I hope you're able to enjoy this video. I'm definitely feeling it. Um, now I want to go ahead and talk about the next segment, which is called, what are you reading? What are you watching? Okay, and what am I reading? Well, I, I am reading a book that I haven't read in a long time. It's very interesting. Me, because not only being a jock, I'm also a baseball jock. So um, it was a big week for us as the Yankees signed Garrett Cole. Um, and so, well, I was just, uh, you know, thought I would go ahead and read this book again. So I dive back into the physics of baseball. Okay, it's a really great book. It's by Robert K. Adar. And it just talks about all the really cool, um, well, all kind of boring mathematical statistics, okay, of baseball. But when you break it down and you start to think about it as a player, as someone that used to play it, as somebody that watches it, um, like what's that stat that now that they, they really put into play and it's like the velocity of the ball leaving the bat and getting in the home run? Like that's all this stuff. Hey, what up, Carter? Yeah. All right. That's all this guy's stuff years ago. Okay, this book was made in uh, 1990, okay? So he studied the physics of baseball. And the thing I can take about from this book in a short note is baseball is one of the hardest sports, if not the hardest sport, because of the physics. Now, I know people are going to go, no, it's the soccer, or, it's the hockey, you know, whatever sport you play or whatever sport you follow is probably the hardest. But, but, but what this book is saying is the physics of baseball. Okay, you have the bat, and it's round, and then you have a round ball, and the round ball is coming in at 90 plus miles per hour, spinning, curving with the wind, it's spinning, and the round bat is swinging through a plane, right? And the plane has to be a perfect plane, uh, like a perfect A to B point to where the ball hits and meets, okay? And they have to hit and meet at a flat point to project the ball to go forward. That is very hard to do. We don't really think of it because, well, we're just so conditioned to just watching athletes and what they do, and it happens so quickly all the time. Batter just gets up, hits the ball, pitcher throws it, yada, yada, yada. Then the pitcher has got to decipher, like, hey, I don't know, that last pitch was 90, now this next pitch is going to be 60, it's going to go this way. Really good stuff. The physics of baseball break it down. They break down a lot of fun. Um, throwing tactics just really cool insight on the game that i absolutely love so uh yeah that's what i'm reading let me know what you're reading it's always good to pick up a book yeah i love movies love television but um always like to read um it's one of the strongest things you can do as an actor is be a good reader so um it's a positive good thing because it interacts with your imagination and that well can um Bring on to something new and bring on to another level. So let me know what you're reading down below. And now, let's talk about what are you watching. I'm reading The Art of a Sense. What is it? Uh, Art of a Sense. Carter, what is that? It's a third book just came out. Is that like a, a fantasy book? Is that like a, a, like a, a science fiction? Sounds cool. See, this guy right here, this is one of my students. Really good kid. Um, I love to see that you're out there reading. Love to see that you're uh, participating. It's a dystopia future. Oh, that's awesome. So it's a cool kind of futuristic sci-fi book. That's awesome, buddy. I'm really proud of you that you're out there reading. Continue reading, okay? No matter where you go, you're going to grow up. You're going to be um, a really good kid, and you're going to grow into an adult. But continue to read, and um, it, it just, just helps you... <laughs> It just helps you in life. I don't know how it helps you compartmentalize a lot of things when you can um, turn your imaginary uh, brain section on throughout reading or it helps you be able to function. Like, don't just read Instagram and, and Snapchat lines, okay? All right, that's what we're becoming. Always picking and dive into a book, a play, something. That is my suggestion. And Carter, I'm happy that here you are reading and keep it up, buddy, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and try out some more of this Al. Oh, man. That is strong stuff, okay? Uh, travel Man, I have Twitter and mostly for the news. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't... You'd be surprised what people regurgitate and um, put out there. 
but uh, you know when you pick up a book and you're able to engulf yourself in, in your imagination whatever that be there's something for you out there somebody has written it it's a it's a fantastic journey but now let's put the books down let's talk about what are we watching and what am I watching well it's December Hell yeah, I'm watching Christmas movies. Woohoo! Christmas movies all the rest of the month. And um, love those Christmas movies. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you what I'm watching. And then you tell me down in the comments below what you're watching or what your favorite Christmas movie is. First of all, my favorite Christmas movie is, <laughs> um, you know, I'm an action hero guy. I like Jingle All the Way. So if you've never seen Jingle All the Way, the one with Sinbad, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come on. And, uh, yeah, it's just a really great movie about a, a father that works all the time. And he's able to, uh, he, he's supposed to get this action figure for his son. He doesn't. The day before Christmas, um, on the other side of town, it's Sinbad, who also works all the time. And they're both kind of fighting throughout the story. And then what happens at the end, well, you're going to have to watch it. But Chingo all the way. That is my favorite Christmas movie. Love it. I watch it every time. And uh, really looking forward to watching that. Some other ones I really like to watch are Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Hilarious, hysterical, funny movie from the 80s. I like Home Alone, okay? 90s classic Macaulay Culkin. Was it the 90s? It's probably 89, 90s, something, something like that. Um, love that movie. Uh, Die Hard, really great. Of course, Home Alone, let's go go <laughs> and uh you know you got your classics like miracle on 34th street you got um the christmas story okay who wants to see a travel man dan christmas story in cleveland the museum i'm gonna try to get out there i'm gonna ride home i'm not sure if i'm gonna have time i like to just spend my time with my family eating and uh drinking but we're gonna try to get out there but that's an awesome movie if you haven't seen that but yeah, let me know. It doesn't have to be a Christmas movie. If you don't celebrate Christmas, that's cool. I understand it. Um, we live in a PC world. But for those of you that do uh, celebrate Christmas and understand it, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, let me know which movie you're watching down below, whether it's Christmas or not. I'll get it. Um, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, let's just not make it a big issue. Just let me know. Uh, that's it. Um, but that's what I'm reading. That's what I'm watching. Let's go ahead and swig this last bit down. I'll let you know now the quote of the week. And then we'll close the show off. And I'll head over and watch the Bills kick the shit out of the Pittsburgh Steelers. woo -hoo! All right. Uh, I don't think I was supposed to swear on YouTube. Um, sorry. All right. Here we go. Oh, I got to give it a score, too. All right. Now... If you watch the show every Sunday, you'll know that last week was my favorite beer of all, the Labatt's Blue. I gave it a perfect 10, okay? Perfect 10. This beer, when I'm looking for something stronger, something with a punch, something with a little something, something in it, you know, I definitely go with Arrogant Bastard. Love the name, love the bottle, love the label, just love the can, love the label. Um, just a really great beer. Am I going to give it a 10? No. Why? Well, because it's not Labatt Blue, and I've yet to discover anybody that could reach that pinnacle. But, fantastic beer. It's definitely strong. As you can see, I'm all rosed out and ready to go. Um, really strong. I like it a lot. It's delicious. It's got a malty kind of sweet flavor. It's got a nice al taste to it. Overall, really good al. I'm going to give it, that's right, I'm going to give it an 8. Okay, an 8. Okay? That's what we're going to try out. If you get a chance to try out Arrogant Bastard, I suggest you do. It's a definitely a worth it. And uh, now, let's get into the quote of the week. The quote of the week was brought to us by the pastor, Dale Partridge. Now, despite, like I said before, what your religion may or may not be, who you believe, what you believe, I don't know, okay? And I definitely would never attack you or be personal towards it. That's your belief. I have a ton of Jewish friends. I have a ton of Muslim friends. I have a ton of friends from all over the world. Um, so this pastor just simply stated something that's probably translated in any language, any um, uh, kind of thought process, if you will. And he said this. 
You were born with the ability to change someone's life. Don't ever waste it. Okay? Now that's powerful right there. You were born with the ability to change someone's life. Don't ever waste it. Think about that. Like, that is so powerful. Now, whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you do, whoever you are, you have the ability to change someone's life. Okay? Now, I don't know what that change is. I don't know how you're going to change that person's life. But you have the ability to do it. Don't waste it. Okay? And what that means is help people. Be kind. Be generous. Be supportive. Be encouraging. Okay? Don't be negative. Don't be uh, despairing. Don't, don't bring burden to people. Don't uh, weigh down negative things and be pessimistic and not supportive and uh, bringing people down and making them feel low. Uh, bring, bring them up. Okay? You might be able to change people's life. You have the ability to do this and Man, this is so powerful because you don't know what other people are going into. You, you don't know what they've gone through, okay? And you have the ability to change their life. Something you say, something you do, something that you help them with, some kind of idea that you give them, okay? It could be something small. You could be talking to your friend about, listen, man, I know college isn't the best thing for you, but just stick it out. And then they stick it out and then they meet the woman of their life and their ability, their, their life has changed, okay? There might be something that where you like, you see somebody on the street and they are feeling sad, down, low, you don't even know, dark, okay? And maybe you pick them up by holding the door open for them as they walk into 7-Eleven and then they see the light and they say, you know what, that's right, thank you so much. And they go and instead of doing what they had, had you know, what we're going to do, whether to themselves or to others, they do something else and they brighten their day and that day turns into something else. You just never know. You have the ability. You never know, like, is, is somebody that, like, has a lot of friends from all over the world, you don't know what kind of impact, what kind of positive outlook you have. I don't try to do it. I don't, tr I don't try to, to be somebody that I'm not, okay? I just am who I am, and I try to treat everybody the same, and that's kind, generosity, with respect. And these are really, really old-fashioned values as far as, like, human side of people, and... Well, you just don't know when you just start to do those can impact somebody's life. We have the ability to do it. Let's just continue to do it. Um, yeah, that, that, that is a really powerful quote. And uh, one more time, you were born with the ability to change someone's life. Don't waste it. Okay, don't waste that. Don't, don't feel so secluded inside that this is all you have because there's lots of people out there and they need you and you have the ability to help them. Guys, I'm going to end it on that. We had the Arrogant. We had that crazy elf drink, the Mad Elf. The Bad Elf. I keep calling it the Mad Elf. I don't know why. I think it's because he looks bad. And uh, we had a great time. This is probably the longest I've ever gone. We're going to get ready for the Bills game. If you've been shooting the comments over there, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. We do it every Sunday. Thank you so much. Have a great week. I'm Travel Man Dan. Remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Go Bills.